What's happening, guys? One more. I'm going to make it short, okay? I'm going to try. It's 1944. Two basketball coaches come together. They're friends. They want to put on a game, right? And they decide that, you know, let's do it. Let's get this game on. You know, you're in a different conference. I'm in another conference. Let's, you know, let's not even bother with all of that. Let's just get a game on. I think it'll be a wonderful experience for both of our kids. So the two coaches get together, right? All of the matriculous planning went into to play. They didn't want no cheerleaders, no fans, no media, no cops, no popcorn, cold drink, soda, none of that. Just the basketball people, one ref and a scorekeeper and a witness, a gentleman who owned a newspaper, a little bit about him later. The game goes on. You know, the first match was a blowout. Wasn't even a good match. It was over before it started. So the coaches come together and say, ah, this ain't working. Let's blend them in together. So they put them into, into two groups, the shirts and the skins, blending them in, right? Some of your players, some of my players, let's go. Much more competitive game, right? Kids learned a lot at that moment. Forced to work together. You don't know this guy, you know, quickly adapting to someone else's style of play. And after the game, the two teams hung around and talked and got to know each other a little bit more, right? Because that was their first time ever meeting. And the two coaches, you know, I can imagine them standing back watching this in amazement. And matter of fact, it's later recorded some of their comments, right? And one of the programs, it's this little unknown school. You may have heard of it or not in basketball. A lot of people haven't heard of them. It's called Duke. And other school was North Carolina College for Negroes. The two coaches, one of which, um, McClendon, which was the coach for the NCC, right, was friends with the Duke coach. That's how they put that game on. And it wasn't a game to prove who was the dominant race or anything like that, right? It was a game to tear down walls. Right? It was a game to give these kids exposure to each other. In fact, Aubrey Stanley, one of the players for um, North Carolina College, took, went up to McClendon and he recorded, it's reported in the New York Times, as saying that, wow, they're just like us. They're just like us. He said halfway through it, he, he realized that, you know, we could really beat these guys because they're just like us. And that may seem like something small to you, but this guy, this kid is growing up, I mean, in the belly of segregation, under the weight of segregation, with all of the inferiority complex that comes with the, the South and the, and the abusive, you know, treatment that African-Americans receive, just trying to live. This kid was amazed to discover that they're just like us, but it wasn't just them. It was the Duke kids who went to their coach and said, wow, they're just like us. I would like to hang out with them, but they couldn't hang out with them because this game happened under the nose of segregation. Outside of that gym, if the police would have found out, if anybody would have found out that this was happening, right, it would have been, it would have been catastrophic what would have happened. It would, you know, tragic, but they didn't find out. They was able for it, that moment to carve out a little bit of peace in the world. And, and what was even more powerful is that the one witness, the guy from the newspaper, was a guy from a black newspaper. The black-owned newspaper was in attendance. He witnessed this thing and held the secret until his death. Everybody was involved, held the secret, right? They were sworn a secret. They kept the secret for over 50 years, right? Until they finally, you know, somebody told the story of what happened, and thank God they did. Because... Yeah, this showed that with this newspaper, he didn't report it. Imagine what a source of pride that would have been for everybody to say, hey, you know, NCC beat Duke. Beat them bad. Beat them by 50 points. The story was they came together and they got to know each other and these guys liked each other. And from that group, several of those members are now in the Basketball Hall of Fame, right? But integration of college basketball can be traced, its origins can be traced back 
to that basketball game between uh, HBCU and Duke. And McClendon, who was 28 at the time, he said, I always knew we could play, we could play with anybody if we could just get the chance, if we can get the chance. And HB, you know, see you historically black college coaches are still saying that to this day. We can play with anybody if we have what they have. But they don't. They don't. I talked about it before. The years of legislative systemic racism, the underfunding of these programs, barely funding. Bobby Jindal was the worst thing that happened to black people in Louisiana since Andrew Johnson. You know, he gutted our historical black college. I mean, they were barely staying alive. It's the reason Doug Williams left Gramlin. You know, they barely was staying alive, right? And so if, if these schools are able to compete, you know, but how, how are you going to recruit a kid and talk to a kid and say, hey, come here when you don't even have a television contract? Um, the kid probably, you know, he's, he's not going to have the facilities. He's not going to have all of these things. So these are separated and very unequal um, institutions. The NCAA doesn't have a revenue sharing where they could take some of these billion of dollars that they're making and help under, you know, underfunded programs. They don't. And for that reason, I just think it's time that HBCUs probably break away and it's be very unfortunate because the, the Duke NCC game was about coming together. But we can't come together in this FCS, FBS situation because college football is still very segregated. It's still the old traditional schools with all of the influence and the money and nobody can break in and the SEC has a revenue share that even if you're the worst team in the SEC, you still going to get $32 million a year. There is no such thing like that that exists anywhere else. But they have the black players. They have the players that were once in schools like NCC. And that's unfair. It really is. So I'm challenging everybody, even if it's just $20, man, reach out to a local HBCU. Right. Begin to raise these conversations, have these conversations and see if we could spark a movement to help fund these programs, to keep them around as as living tributes of academic achievement and racial progress towards equality. And you know what? Hey, they just like us. They just like us. Let's play. Football profit.